Hey, what's up? Today I'm gonna show the progress with the MetaHuman Control Rig light, and uh, excuse the kind of uh, weird placements of some of these controls. They are work in progress. So uh, we have started to rig uh, the left arm and the spine, and that's what you can see here. And this is all the controls exposed right here. Technically, the controls are inside these little containers, but each one's a single one. So we have seen in the last video our hand controller, so this is each one of our fingers, and this is still working the same, and they will splay together to make a closed fist pose, which is kind of a, a somewhat no nuanced thing to make with the metahuman body, actually. So there's the thumb. Uh, what's new today, again, are the controls on the hands, and the arm, rather, and they're, they're in kind of like work-in-progress positions for now. So this first one is called the wrist twist here like this. Uh, so the wrist will go up this way and then down that way. So uh, this puts a limit on it so that you can't go too far and will only rotate on its kind of primary axis. So I've simplified it so that it will only allow you to do this rotation. So again, if you want the full control rig, you would have to then bake to the full control rig after. But this is trying to simplify things to get the uh, simplest uh, rig possible. Next is our elbow controller or lower arm and again it is constrained to just a single axis here and won't let you overextend it or break it or go into like weird positions so uh we have that one for the elbow this one's in the you know pretty work in progress uh position here it's most straightforward if i actually go like this and uh you'll see that this controller here moves the arm forward and backwards with a limit a limit on it um, it's definitely possible to break the arm still into weird positions, but it's mostly limited limited in a way that will stop you from doing like really uh, broken things with the metahuman uh, rig. And then if we put it back here, uh, this will rotate the arm again in a, in a very limited way. It is possible to break it, but uh, you'll see that it stops it before it goes um, kind of through the body, which is really common with mocap to have that happen. And so these in combination, while limited, will allow you to get to a lot of different poses like the animation you saw in the beginning. And the overall design uh, philosophy is to put them as single float axis sliders. So there's no rotations or moving in multiple axes. Everything is a single slider. And when you're viewing it as a control, you should have a, basically a good view of what you're actually controlling. So it's very straightforward to use and uh, will allow you to get to a surprising amount of different poses even with this kind of limited control system here, which I'll show you in a second. And the other thing that we've uh, implemented or I've implemented, I'll just leave it like this, is the beginning of the spine system here. So in here are five different bones, which can be kind of complicated to animate, but you'll see here that we have the beginning of a spine twist system and if you do this quickly, you can kind of see the uh, disconnect point between the head and the body. They do an incredibly good job of seeming it, though. So I'll probably enable a little bit more twisting than this, but I am trying to keep this in, like, a pretty conservative amount of uh, rotation for that, because that can also look really weird if you twist this too much. So just trying to keep thing in, things in control. And uh, this awkward control right here is the the spine bend, which, again, you can see that the, the body disconnecting. That doesn't happen uh, when you animate it. Uh, it's just like an editor updating thing with control rig. So this is how much um, forward and back bend I thought was natural. You can probably bend a little bit more maybe. And this is pretty bendy, like if you're doing like this. Um, however, I went and tweaked the um, the values that basically happen here to make this back bend look natural. And same with the forward one, because it's pretty easy to actually come up with a, a funny looking spine. So you can do both at the same time, like this. So simplifying five rotation bones, uh, five bones into two sliders, and uh, we have not implemented and not planning on implementing at the moment a side-to-side -side one. We could definitely add that in there later, but I'm trying to get the most minimal amount of uh, controls as possible. So uh, that's the current state of it. Uh, I would say that these placements are temporary for sure while we're in design phase and just trying to get the actual kinematics to uh, work in a nice way. 
but you can see that with the limits and the reduced amount of controls that posing the metahuman and even animating and cleaning up mocap becomes a little bit more um, less complex. There's just less controls, which will mean less, um, you know, tunability and having everything be like completely perfect. But you should be able to get some nice looking stuff and it will keep it from breaking, which is my main concern actually, is to make sure that the elbows aren't going inside the body and that we aren't doing things that are broken, so to speak. So yeah, I made this little animation and did a couple of poses using this system. And you can see here that we are able to touch our nose and with simplified finger controls, it's pretty easy to just kind of get it right there, right where we want it to be. And it's designed so that when we're animating FK, we can still turn the upper body like this um, while not messing up the uh, placement of the hand in FK. That was kind of important. So we kind of messed this one up here, but he comes back up. Uh, we get into a thumbs down pose, which is pretty funny. Um, and it's, it's pretty interesting working through the controls, how you actually have to get a thumbs down to happen. You can't just like spin the hand upside down. It doesn't quite work that way. A uh, little bit of counter animation. Then we have a pullback, right? So this is pulling back for a punch. And I was like, can I animate a punch like this? Uh, you'll ideally be working out here when you do this, right? And then he punches and then pulls back. So that looks like this. We kind of messed up the beginning of the animation, but touches his nose. And a bit robotic, right? Because it's just like, you know, first pass block out with a, an FK rig. But you could look at this kind of like mocap data, and then we'd be able to, with very minimal controls, come in and start to additively change it or just get in there. And if you're comfortable with the keys and the curves, you could actually just get in there and start doing surgery with it just with a massively reduced amount of complexity. If you were like, you know what, this pose isn't quite doing it for me. Let's see what it would look like with a higher elbow, a lower elbow, right? And then we come in here and we want to handle the wrist, which is just only one controller, right? We can't go further than that. Uh, the human hand won't really allow you to, so we stopped it there, right? Maybe we make it a thumbs up pose like this, and then it goes thumbs down, right? Huh, that'd be kind of interesting. Let's see what this animation plays like. Um, I kind of like it from this angle. Oh, it's kind of bad, actually, with all the controllers on it. But let's check it out with that little tweak that we made here. Touching nose, thumbs up, thumbs down, and forward. So that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, I just kind of did that on the fly. I'll turn off the uh, high manipulators here. And so, you know, the hope is that cleaning up mocap and whatnot eventually becomes that quick and easy too, which uh, mocap is a little bit more complicated because you're working with a lot of data. But the idea is to be able to make these uh, informed tweaks much simpler and have the body limitations of the metahuman baked into the control rig, uh, meaning that you cannot do things that are impossible for the body. So that wraps it up for this video. Um, I'm going to be doing, like I said, the head and lower body and mirroring it and building a UI for it. And uh, this is the system for uh, Cinetracer uh, internally is what's going to happen first. And I'm building a standalone test app first called Cinetracer Meta, which is here. So my very first Unreal Engine 5 package project will just be uh, a control system for the metahumans. And then eventually, if people are interested, I'll probably release the lip sync tools for the face and this body rig all together as something like metahuman tools or something like that for people who are kind of in between. Um, actually, I just say like a beginner to animating in metahumans in uh, Unreal Engine. The idea is to make this kind of like simple and uh, streamlined. So that wraps up with this video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.